What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today we're gonna to take a look at a promising project that is about to go into a public sale and then launch on Uniswap. Before we get into this, I wanna kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Uh, turn on the notification so you know when the next video is coming out. Um, leave a like, a comment, uh, a dislike if you will, and even if it's a comment of something you don't approve of or a correction that you see that I may have uh, um, made a mistake on, please feel free to do so. My one request is to please be uh, civil in your discourse because kindness and compassion are absolutely free and I truly believe that if we all exercise that just a little bit more, we can do our best to make the world the place that you'd like to see. So, uh, or at least that I'd like to see. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at Rocket Vault. It's uh, rocketvaults.io. And uh, the website is pretty simple. We're gonna uh, poke around here. We're gonna take a look at the white paper. Uh, this is a smart vault that's delivering a high APY. Okay, we can read that right there. And as we get into the white paper, I am gonna do my best to just not read and make this dry. Okay, I've looked this over. I have a really good uh, idea of what they are doing. And it's pretty cool. So a few things that the white paper doesn't show is um, they don't show this uh, beta vault that has been available to a few people that it's earning for Tether, a pretty awesome APY in its test uh, phase, okay? Using real money. Uh, it's integrated into Binance and Bitfinex. Um, I imagine they're gonna be connecting to a lot more APIs. Um, there's gonna be a free version, institutional version, and here's the team. Okay, uh, all of these, or not all except for uh, Fawaz, um, all have active LinkedIn's. Uh, you can come and check them out. Something really important to note is that Ferrum has been uh, incubating them, and Ian Friend, the co founder of Ferrum Network. Now, Ferrum, nearly everything that they've gotten behind has done really well. Okay, you can see the roadmap, we'll get into that, all that uh, later. So let's jump over to the white paper. Again, a smart vault powered by AI, artificial intelligence, and ML, machine learning. So we have this abstract, essentially, they wanna uh, change the world through the use of applied AI, uh, so uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning in crypto value investments, okay? They have a unique concept that they think uh, is going to take the world by storm and let's get into it now of course there's all these disclaimers i am not going to read this feel free to go through this yourself i'm just going to scroll through there nice and easily you know all of this is indemnifying themselves as a company and stating clearly what their project purpose is their token document documentation uh, what sort of representation that they're claiming, what warranties that are or not there. I'm not a lawyer, so if this is something you are wanting to invest in and you can understand all this, uh, do your due diligence. Uh, you know, regulatory approval, uh, I've looked it over, they're not, uh, at least I know they're, they definitely did not accept any sort of pre-sales to US citizens or Chinese citizens or any other country that has uh, sanctions established by the United Nations or people that have sanctions uh, against the United Nations. They are really covering up their, uh, their end here to make sure that they're um, clearly not promising anything uh, with due to their, the price of their token and whatnot and that it's that even they're not promising that they can actually fully deliver but that's that's what lawyers have them do now let's get into it all right so we have a very big white paper 36 pages we'll get through it the best we can so uh, 
I think it's really good to just sort of uh, start off like what is artificial intelligence and I'm just going to read a little bit here and then we'll move on. So simply put, artificial intelligence is when machines can learn and make decisions similar to humans. There's many different types of artificial intelligence, including machine learning, where instead of being programmed to uh, what to think, machines can observe, analyze, and learn from the data and the mistakes, just like our own human brains are able to. Okay, this can all be applied into different consumer products and have, has been applied in many different ways through healthcare, physics, da 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 da. Uh, let's move on. So the overview here, um, the brainchild of a few dedicated experts uh, from around the world, in the world here uh, and to use the AI machine learning algorithms to adopt a data-driven approach to uh, create these vaults and, and that they're going to call smart vaults and the strategies to minimize losses, maximize gains, to provide the best APY. So they've been doing all this analysis so far in their, uh, their beta, monitoring 700 to 800 listed assets in top global exchanges. Uh, oops, sorry if that made a noise there, touching the wire. Um, let's move on. This thing's gonna be working around the clock, 24 seven, 365. Uh, they're going to be hyperscaling this thing through, um, I'm not sure what GCP is, but AWS, Amazon Web Services. So this will be a bit of a centralized um, option. Uh, I would hope that eventually they uh, can find a way to move it and scale it to decentralized spaces. So Rocket Vaults are smart because of the uh, unique intelligent systems. They're going to have uh, a fetching age, uh, um, engine grabbing real-time data. There's going to be a prediction engine. So this can go through and uh, find the previous trend so that as it's entering the market, um, it's doing so in the proper way, not just saying, not just going and entering in whenever new deposits come in. There's gonna be asset rebalancing based on market conditions, a treasury management engine. This is really important for understanding, uh, you know, how much to keep into reserves for dollar cost averaging and how deeply to dollar cost average before taking a proper loss. The monitoring engine as well uh, is going to be, you know, looking at all these different uh, positions, waiting for the right time and some sort of simulation engine. I assume since there's no description here, what the simulation engine is uh, doing is that of uh, simulating what might happen, okay? And to do a comparative analysis off of what decisions that uh, they did make and further allow the machine learning to do its job. Yes, data-driven approach. So all these things, you know, everything with machine learning type of AI, uh, it's 100% it's data-driven, okay? Um, with you know, based uh, you know, creating these predictions and whatnot, and following through on their theories of what was predicted. This involves pattern recognition. Um, okay, so the training and learning models. This is sort of where things are getting started. They uh, are the building block model of the pattern recognition and is, it's a phenomenon through which a system gets trained and becomes adaptable to uh, give results accurately. Learning is the most important phase as to how well the system performs on the data provided to the system, depending on which algorithms are used on the data. So these training models undergo two phases of, and the data set is divided into two categories, one of which is in training the model and the call and called the training set the other is used in testing the model and called uh, the testing set so the training set is the data that was pulled from multiple centralized exchanges like binance and bitfinex using apis to build a model 
This data was then used to train the system. Training rules and algorithms are used to give relevant information on how to associate input data with output decisions. The system is trained by applying these algos to the data set. All the relevant information is extracted from the data set and results are obtained. Okay, so the RVF, which is a rocket vault, um, has produced over 100% APY consistently during the entire period of testing starting from January 2020 up to the last, you know, up to this date. Past performance does not guarantee future results though, of course. This is why uh, the use of predictive analysis and allowing the machine to learn the patterns is important. Okay, let's move along. Okay, how does all this work? <clears throat> Excuse me. The data, the real-time data fetching engine is uh, gonna connect to all these global exchanges uh, with APIs, bringing this all in in a hyperscale like GCP uh, or, or AWS, and it's gonna save all that data in flat files to feed the AI engine before being processed. So this is what this kind of flat file CSV is um, looking like, okay? Just, it's like, you know, machines, just like yum, 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 eat this all up. Then has the prediction engine with these uh, machine learning capabilities. Combination of time series patterns with volume uh, anomaly detection from AI interface engines enables Rocket Vault to carry out these decisions on buy or ignore the asset at the runtime. Runtime meaning in, in real time activity. The Smart Vault application has an embedded classifier that monitors live data for further classifying decisions like a strong buy or a weak buy. Certain, because you want to know this, like this is like make a decision, do it now versus let's keep watching for the better opportunity. Certain criteria application derived from the surge in volume data look over minutes to hours to days. Smart Vaults leverage LSTM-based neural networks to identify volume anomalies and time series patterns detected. Now, honestly, uh, okay, here we go. Uh, no, LSTM model. I cannot tell you exactly what that is right off the top of my head, so my apologies there. So once the Smart Vault predicts a few tokens uh, that show huge potential, it'll put those assets under its monitoring list as per the below screenshot. Um, so again, this is where the monitoring engine comes in. And then you have asset rebalancing based on market conditions. So they'll incorporate this uh, strategy based on market conditions in case market fluctuations. Uh, the vault has been designed to allocate a higher amount to high probability patterns to achieve maximum gains possible. So more and more, this is looking like what hedge funds do and what they do, they, you know, they pay these quants, um, the quantitative uh, analyst, um, to tell them what to do with uh, investor money. So then you have the treasury management engine, all right? Again, it's all coming together. Uh, it's the automated control of the treasury and it will uh, account or amount of each token to hold based on their available volume, amount to keep in the treasury for comfortable withdrawal for all users at any given time, uh, what percentage of profit to secure in stable coins, ETH, BTC, passing on the info to the smart contract for rewards distribution. The monitoring engine. All right, so before, you know, we were up here, it kind of skipped over uh, from, from up here is like the prediction engine was gonna be handing off to the monitoring list. Now, what I understand is this uh, monitoring engine, okay? It's another, it's like the next level of the prediction engine that monitors every buy order uh, that the prediction engine executes. Now, the monitoring engine takes control of an already executed order to arrive at the optimal sell order target, not just, okay, at 5% go, you know, or some set amount. It's like, it's looking, it's constantly uh, following up. Now, this is like a handoff from the predictive uh, engine. 
All right, now we got the simulation engine because before we didn't have this. So let's, let's read this real quick and we'll get a better understanding of what simulation engine is and see if I was correct. So this is capable of uh, multiple strategies in parallel to handle various market scenarios. Uh, they've been testing a lot of AI-based strategies to identify the best possible strategy to handle different market situations using backtesting with historic data as well as testing in simulation mode with real-time data gives the Rocket Vault the edge to achieve minimum loss and maximum gain to the user. All right, that's pretty, pretty broad. So essentially that's how all this is doing. It's, it's using all these um, you know, machine learning techniques and different uh, modules, if you will, to walk it through the, the stages of when somebody, uh, when money is coming in to the fund, essentially, they're depositing, and when to execute, how much to hold in reserves, uh, times to rebalance when, um, uh, you know, profit taking and move it into other aspects, other tokens, so on and so forth to maximize the gains. All right, here's the business model. For the retail free side, you can deposit tokens into Rocket Vault up to $10,000. There's going to be no KYC and there's a 15% fee applied to the profits. Rewards are compounded automatically. Rewards credited on a quarterly basis. Um, and okay, so here, if you are depositing from zero to $10,000 worth of, you need to uh, stake 50% of that amount in RVF. Now, what I, this, how I'm reading this without any clarification from a team member is that if you want to deposit 10,000, you had to also have $5,000 worth of RVF staked. Now, whether or not that is time stamped at the time of your deposit you know because again rvf is has a market value say it's worth one dollar at the time you come in just making a hypothetical uh, uh call here then that would mean you would need five thousand rvf tokens does that mean that at that time you deposit now you're set or does that mean that every day, every week, every month, or every quarter, or something that you need to um, maybe adjust the amount of RVF you have staked if the, like say RVF goes down in value, and let's say it goes down to 50 cents and all of a sudden your RVF staked is only worth 2,500 uh, at that point, does that mean you need to deposit more RVF staked um, in order to cover your amount and so maybe or you know these are some things I'd like clarified but what I did read in here somewhere is that uh, once that is available they will clarify because it doesn't really matter right now because this is not an active system and we're just talking about what could be now um, there is also for paid institutions or for institutions they have to pay to get in here and their minimum deposit is going to be 100k. Um, most people watching this are not going to be interested in this right here. So again, yes, they have these two uh, user, yeah, so right here, uh, the details on RVF tokens to be held by the user will be published in the support FAQ section of the website with the public beta release. Token information. All right, there's gonna be 100 million of these maximum supply. Uh, this is all, these are ERC-20s. Uh, the abbreviation is RVF, as you may have guessed with uh, everything we've covered so far in the white paper. This is a utility token that can be used to gain access to the smart vault services. Uh, So here's how the fundraising is going to be spent. They have project development, marketing, public relations, business development, research, reserves, and uh, funds uh, will be cover operating costs. Okay. Here we have the total token supply and how it's distributed.
nice little pie chart. Um, all right, what's it say? As the adoption of vaults increase, this is if they increase the accumulation RVF tokens by the users, which have positive impact on the token value. And of course, you know, we don't want to speculate on what the value might be, just what it is. Okay, this is a chart, this or this is a, a listing that I like to see more than than this pie chart, although this gives you a nice visual representation. But this is more important to understand because the team, although they have 12.5%, so 12 and a half million tokens, they are have a long vesting period. Okay, first off, they have to wait eight months and then 10% is released per month. Okay, so that's a total vesting of uh, 18 months before they receive all of their tokens. Next, you have the operations fund, which can't touch anything for three months, and then it's 10% a month uh, on forward. The marketing as well, another three months. Advisors are have to hold for one month. Uh, so that looks like Ferrum, for instance. The development has a four month lock period before they start really receiving 25% quarterly. Uh, and again, the advisors still have a pretty long cliff here uh, of vesting because it's still 10% per month after that um, starting in month two. Then we get into the pre-seed round, uh, which is a three month with 20% uh, per month onward with a total eight month vesting. And then the seed round with one month with a 20% uh, per month, so a total of six month vesting. Then we get strategic round, all right, which uh, starts off right from the beginning. So you're gonna have a 20% uh, from the TGE, which is the token generation, token generation event, all right, uh, which is basically when it hits Uniswap. So 20% of that five million and then 25% of another 5 million for the private round, and then 30% of the public round, all right? Then there's gonna be uh, 5 million, so 5% saved for staking rewards, and then 3.5% for the exchange liquidity. And we can see that all right here of what's gonna be available at the, um, at the time of listing. So again, the strategic round, which was the 20% of 5 million, and then the private round at 25% of 5 million, that's shown right here. There's 20% of 5 million, 25% of 5 million, and 30% of 3 million. Totaling, this is how much would be available to sell onto the market at the time of listing. And there will be a total of this many tokens at the listing. So the market cap at listings would be 252,000. Now, if you keep in mind that uh, the strategic round people right here with the 1 million tokens, they had bought at 50 cents and it's gonna be listed at eight cents. And then a, uh, all of these tokens were bought at 6.5 uh, cents. Okay, so both of those will be in profit. Typically, from my experience, these guys might take a little bit of profit, but not too much. Um, so that along with people who didn't get into any of these rounds, uh, you know, often you'll see a beginning run up, you'll see a correction period and then a consolidation period, and then things will go forward. But who knows, we don't have a crystal ball. I'm just also basing this off of trends I've seen in the past after launches. Overall, this looks like a healthy uh, distribution and vesting period to allow healthy market conditions, but anything can happen. Roadmap, okay, so we're covering some old stuff here. Let's move up to around now. So March and April, so they wanna get this uh, Uniswap listing done in April. I believe they've done most of their uh, pre-token sales, they haven't done the public sale yet. And then uh, we'll be waiting for uh, the product to come out. 
Again, uh, the functionality, this is intended to be a utility token to use the smart vaults. So this is what a lot of things, again, the legal mumbo jumbo, what it's not intended to do. Let's move on. They're really covering their, their end. And also, too, they're covering their end on uh, understanding that there are numer numerous risks associated with having and buying this token. Not really having, but the risk of buying and like, you know, what your investment could go down in value technically so uncertain regulations and enforcement actions you know they could come down uh, this is all under development so do your own research you know other competitors can come to market and take market share um, they may not be able to get everything fully developed Security weaknesses from hackers or malicious groups, you know, uh, hitting the website, um, you know, Sybil attacks, uh, smurfing and spoofing. Of course, these are, uh, you know, the token itself is on a smart contract, so that's different. But if uh, the system itself has issues because it's not uh, like a decentralized system, there could be problems. And there's always just, you know, other risks that like may not be seen or even understood at this time. So overall, this is what they're trying to do, um, you know, to quickly analyze uh, big data and feed it into uh, artificial intelligence so that it can uh, start learning and applying these strategies to these systems to get investors higher APY. So uh, overall, this is interesting. I'd love to see how well they do. I'm gonna got, got my eye on it and uh, I wanted to share it with you all today as a, a piece of, uh, you know, a public service. And let me know what you think. I am interested in uh, how much, you know, excitement there could be around something like this. Definitely a cool idea. I would love to see it in a more decentralized form. These are how things start to move forward. Right, everybody, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. You know, be sure and remember to uh, subscribe if you haven't already. You know, keep watching this over on library.tv or Odyssey. Uh, you know, more and more I'm going away from YouTube because of the censorship and I support more censorship resistance. So if you know of any censorship resistance projects out there, let me know in the comments. I appreciate your time. Love you all. Peace.